what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hamlin, aka The Laptop Legend, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the stocks that I'm looking at for tomorrow. Also doing a little bit of a recap for today. We had some crazy runners today. I called them perfectly in yesterday's video. Literally both of the ones I talked about ran over 100% at one point. One of them was over 200%, so I hope some of you guys banked on that. If you made some money, let me know down in the comments section below so I can know I helped you guys out. And uh, yeah, man, we got, we got some pretty exciting things going on in this market, but there was a little bit of a shift today that I want to talk about to make sure you guys are being careful so you don't get dumped on uh, moving forward because uh, you never want to get dumped on. It's not a good feeling. Yeah, anyways, uh, let's dive into my laptop so I can talk about these stocks, guys. Please like this video if you made some money and uh, you know, leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already because I make these videos every single day. I guess not every day anymore. I can't say that anymore. I used to make them every day. Now I make them uh, whenever I have time, which is less often than it should be. It depends on how the market is. All right, I'm kind of rambling here. Let's do it. All right, guys, so I'm here at my laptop, and this is a chart for MTRT. I'm actually not sure why I have this one pulled up. This uh, really didn't do too much today. It actually was the backside today, so you can see. Uh, was that today? I think that was today. Yeah, it had to have been today. I'm losing track of time. Today was the second, right? Yeah, that was the second. All right, so you guys can see this one. You know, It had a nice dip. There actually was a great dip by here. It dumped and then spiked almost $2 a share off of those lows. So, I mean, if you caught some of that, would have been epic. Um, then it dumped again and bounced again, dumped again, bounced again, dumped again, bounced again, dumped again, bounced again, dumped and bounced really high. This was just insane, guys. I took a, uh, a crazy stab at it here at like 250. There was a, no, I first started buying at like 240. I think I had like a thousand shares from 243 or something like that. I forget what the exact price was. I tried to add a 250 because I saw a huge gap, literally from 250 to like two, 290 something. And uh, I thought it was fake at first, but literally it cracked that and it was straight up there. A 50 cent gap in the ask. And I, uh, I threw some shares on the ask there. And you can see it actually did fill some. So I filled 100 shares at 290 flat. And then I filled 200 shares and I believe it was, I believe it was 280 and 200 shares at 278. So I sold 500 shares of my 1,000 shares all the way up here. Pretty epic. I sold the rest at I think, I think 270, I want to say. I, I believe it was 270. Yeah, I think it was 270, something like that. Uh, so that was pretty nice, guys. Pretty nice dip buy. I don't want to get too into the specifics of this one. This one wasn't the crazy runner, but if we go to Lucy, uh, this one was absolutely epic, guys. I mean, again, I made the video last night. It was like this. This is what the chart looked like this morning. It uh, just absolutely ripped. I mean, it just it just ripped and then kept ripping and then just kept grinding up and then making new highs pretty much all day long. Finally dumped towards the end of the day. Uh, but this was just such an epic chart, guys. So much opportunity to make money on it. I butchered this, guys. And the reason I butchered this was because I, uh, I was so used to trading MTRT that I was only taking like a thousand share lots at the open. So, you know, I buy a couple thousand shares when really on a stock like this, I should be taking 10,000 share lots or at least 5,000 share lots. So I, uh, I really did not make anything on this initial run. Like I only made 500 bucks or something like that, which is, which is just stupid given that I, I called this out so early and it ran literally 100% in like like 15 minutes. So that was a little frustrating for me, but in the future, I'm gonna try to be more aggressive uh, when I have you know high odds plays like that, just because I really wanna capitalize on, on it when I'm here. And uh, I realized that I really am not going as hard as I could on some of these plays or being as patient as I could on some of these plays because I don't wanna mess up my Green Day streak. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you probably know I have not had a red day in a long time, but it's been since April 21st. I have not had a red day since April 21st. I will show you my day trading profits chart. Here is September so far. Again, I made 5,400 a day. Here's August, all green days. Here's July, all green days. Here's June, all green days. Here's May, all green days. Here's April. I had one red day on April 21st. Before that, it was March. First. So you can see like I don't really have red days and because I'm on such a long streak of green days I feel like I, I'm doing everything in my power to avoid messing up that streak which on one hand okay great you know I'm always making money but if I'm you know having a two thousand dollar green day because I'm cutting something short when I could make twenty thousand dollars on it even if I had a red day my green days would be way bigger and it would more than make up for it and again all the best traders who I follow have red days because it's a part of trading. So I, I'm in this messed up mindset where I like really don't wanna ruin my streak, but I know it's hurting my total profits overall. Like if I just ignore red days and trade how I feel like I should, 
I will be probably a lot more profitable by the end of the year. So that's something I'm, I'm really gonna work on overcoming. If I have my first red day, I'm gonna need you guys to celebrate with me so that, you know, we can, uh, we can be excited that I'm finally over that. So, you know, that's what happened with this today. I, I really butchered this LUSI. It was a great, great runner, and uh, I just butchered it. The other one, I'm forgetting the ticker name right now. What was that? K, K L Y G. K, that's not a K, K L Y G. And this one also ran right at open. Uh, well, actually, I guess it dipped for two minutes, and then it ripped past those highs of the dips, ripped past the previous previous day's high and uh after that man it just i mean it literally went straight up and then after that it literally went straight down which was kind of annoying and uh i ended up getting actually i, I didn't i didn't play this too horribly again i should have just taken way bigger size on this so that was my mistake here i need to be more aggressive in situations like this because i mean that's just that's just an insane rip you know 20 cents a share guys if i if i take any type of size even 10,000 shares that's 2,000 bucks but i had like 2,000 shares or something and I sold too early so just very frustrated with myself overall on this and uh, then on the back side here I tried to dip by there was an all-you-can-eat buffet at uh, where was it right here at like 54 cents I believe it was maybe 53 cents something like that and uh, basically I I thought it was gonna bounce here because a lot of times it'll do that and I bought a bunch of shares I had like 12,000 shares here and then it just washed out horribly so I ended up giving back a ton right here. Didn't, I mean, I literally could not sell until like down here. And then of course, you know, when it finally fills me after I've, I've already canceled, I'm pending cancel, fills me right at the bottom. I end up losing, I think like over a thousand off of the top on this. I mean, it was just, it was just terrible. Like 54 to pretty much 45. I mean, it was just terrible. So I, I definitely got washed out on this one, but it, it was, it's crazy how ugly this finished. So I'm not sure if there's some convertible notes on this or what happened, but uh, definitely very, very ugly. I think the difference between that and LUSI is the fact that LUSI, I don't, I don't believe it has convertible notes because if it did, I'm sure they would be converting at these prices. So I think that's kind of the difference in uh, what, why it was running. Now, the other play that I completely butchered today, which is going to haunt me for the rest of my life, is GMPR, guys. Now, if you have been with me since, you know, January, February, you know this is a play that I actually bought a while back, guys. I actually bought this play uh, back in this run, you know, right here. I bought it I'm not sure which day it was. It might, yeah, I think it was on this day right here. So it like wicked. I ended up buying it, dip buying it down here, and ended up running again, bouncing, and it had a, just a beautiful next day up here. Uh, you know, pretty much, I think doubled for my entry in one day. And uh, you know, I made a good amount of money on that. That was actually the best day of my career. This day right here on uh, February 8th, I made like eighteen thousand dollars that day. And uh, you know, I locked in a lot, and then it faded back down. A lot of people, you know, forgot about it or didn't lock in profits. They were mad, they had bags, they cut it. I ended up buying more. I bought like 50,000 around five cents and I just sat on it guys. And this chart was really beautiful up until today. You know, up until today, it was just really nice. You know, higher lows, really clean channel. And it was just such an obvious breakout at that 10 cent area. So when this news came out this morning, uh, I knew that it was gonna run. So what I did was I bought 100,000 shares and I bought them I gotta zoom in a ton so you guys can see this. I bought them literally right here as soon as the news came out. I bought them at 9.5, except it didn't run at all. I bought two 50,000 share lots and uh, I ended up cutting it down pretty much as low as I think like nine, I might've been cutting it in this minute here, down 9.3 and then 9.2. So I ended up losing like 100, no, like 200, like 200 bucks, 250 bucks on this play, which is insane because then the news spread, I was the first on the news, I call it out in the Discord, uh, and then the news spread, people actually figured it out, and uh, it went viral, and this thing just took off and had straight green candles all the way up to 15 cents, you know, over a 50% run with no pullbacks whatsoever. So I literally left over 5,000, well I guess not over, I, I left $5,000 on the table, so instead of making 5,000, I lost uh, 250 on this play, and I've been waiting on this literally for like six months, uh, so it's very frustrating. Now, I, I still did have 50,000 shares, um, from five cents and I sold some of those up at uh, 13s. I sold only 20,000 of them But then later on in the day, you know, this thing looked pretty nice. It was consolidating making higher lows looking awesome Looks like it was gonna break out through this this uh, 148 area like it was gonna break out through the 15 resistance from the first run You see where the top of the wick is there literally like right at 15. So we're thinking all right. I mean, this is great it's about to rip through there. It's uh, it's trending upwards, but then it literally just fell off the face of the earth. 
I mean, it just dumped and kept making lower lows. It tried to bounce, bounced a little bit here, absolutely dumped, and uh, it just kept making lower lows for the rest of the day. And I'm like, why is it doing this? Because it actually had really, really good news. They announced like uh, an LOI for a big, big acquisition of like, I was like a $30 million deal or something. And the market cap of the company was only like, like $10 million or something like that. So I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering how is this possible? Uh, so I went over here and I went to the, uh, I went to the security details. You know, and I looked at the market cap. Market cap, again, is only $8 million. And this deal was valued I don't know where I see the deal. Overview? Yeah, $23 million deal. So like way more than the market cap of the stock. It's planning on uplistings. Like there, there's no reason this, this stock should have dumped this hard on this type of news. Like I get, you know, okay, it, it gets a little, a little ahead of itself. All green candles, it needs a pullback. Uh, maybe it even finishes not up this high, but it should have closed over 10 cents. So I'm like, why is it dumping this hard? So I had to go and do a little digging. And uh, based on what I found, it looks like there may actually be some dilution. So some people on Twitter were trying to blame this on Tim Sykes. This is not, you know, this is not the fault of Tim Sykes, guys. Uh, he is a day trader. He does a lot of similar stuff to what I do. And uh, he does not cause a massive dump like this. So I was looking into the, uh, the financials of the company. So for that, I, uh, I went here and I went to the filings and disclosure. I opened the, uh, the quarterly report from June 29th. It looks like this. And if you go to page 14, you can see that there is still, this is $50,000. You can see this is basically uh, outstanding balance. So there was still an outstanding balance of $95,800 convertible at 1.5 cents per share. So basically what that means is there's like a, there's a convertible note holder who, based, if I'm reading this correctly, again, if someone knows more, Feel free to correct me in the in the comments down below. But based on what I'm reading, it looks like you know there, there's up to ninety five thousand dollars of dilution of someone who can get their shares at one point five cents. So I did the math on that, and it looks like that would be about six point three million shares of dilution. Which honestly, in comparison with the overall volume on the day, is really not that big. You know, this was the biggest volume day we've seen in like you know forever. I mean, this, this was a 74 million volume day, 73.8 million in volume. So 6 million on the day is less than 10% of that. So I, you know, I wouldn't expect that to really make such a big difference, uh, but maybe there was enough bag holders from, from these days up here that it was, it was dumping down. I don't know, man. Uh, maybe there's something else that I'm missing, but you don't get a play with news this good normally that dumps that hard unless there's some type of dilution. So that's the only thing I can think of that it would be you know note holders, because if you go here, uh, you can see these notes were actually converted, and these are uh, these are times where they actually, you know, had new stuff added to the uh, the outstanding shares of the company. Note conversions, and you can see a lot of this stuff happened uh, after that run where I got in on these red days. So you know, so this is on February. We got February fifth, February tenth, February sixteenth. A lot of them converted on on February sixteenth. And if you go to those days, you know, February 16th, what day is that? Oh, that's the day it tried to bounce, wicked, and then ended up dumping, you know? So a lot of these days on the backside, it looks like there were no conversions. So I'm assuming that's what part of what this is, uh, but I guess, I'm, you know, I'm not positive. I just feel like that probably had some effect. So if you go here, you can see, uh, if you go to the top, you can see 81 million shares as of June 29th. If you go here, you can see under security details, there are 84.6 million shares as of yesterday. So if this updates and is like 90 million shares as of the next date, we know that there was probably some dilution today and that's probably what caused the dump, or at least that probably helped contribute to the dump between that and you know people who were, who were buying and then uh, I guess just flipping it. So that's my hypothesis on GMPR. Um, but I guess in terms of uh, what stock I'm watching tomorrow, really guys, I just wanna have a, uh, I just want you guys to be careful. I guess that's the biggest thing because with the big dump on GMPR, uh, with MTRT being on the backside, having a big red candle, and uh, with KLYG, you know, also having a nice run and then just ending big ugly red on the day, I think you know it's it's not as bullish a sentiment as it was you know going into today. So because of that, uh, you know, I, I don't think. 
I don't, I don't think we're gonna have a crazy runner like this tomorrow. I could be wrong, but I feel like we won't. So th my best guess for what would be running tomorrow is, uh, is AVRI. It is this ticker right here, super low float. And uh, it just started running today, barely any volume at all. You can see it didn't even hit a million volume and it was running on that. So, I mean, literally, if this thing starts going, it could easily hit a dollar again. So keep this one on your watch, guys. This is my biggest watch for tomorrow besides, you know, I guess out of new tickers, this is my biggest watch for tomorrow. Definitely a, a big on watch. But, you know, again, I just, with everything that's been happening, guys, KLYG, like just an ugly chart. So I don't want you guys to get wrecked. So just be careful. I would say uh, just be careful tomorrow. That's kind of my main thing. And uh, that's pretty much it. I want to take a quick look at, at ILUS. Uh, so it is doing some nice consolidation in this area. Honestly, we'll see what happens. It keeps making higher lows here. Starting to wedge. Volume washing out a little bit. I do like that. We get another you know, maybe consolidate on Friday and then potentially a nice rip on Monday or something like that. If we hold these levels nicely, I may take uh, take some shares, see if this thing can get another leg up uh, with the new the new news coming out. I think there's new new news coming out, I'm pretty sure on this one, whether it's the share structure update or, or the new deal with Europe. So I'm not sure how long that's gonna take, but I think we could uh, we could definitely get another run out of this and break these highs. So I do like this consolidation, the volume washing out. So I'm, I'm gonna be looking for that on this one. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Obviously, you know, MIDI, I'm still holding this. I got a ton of shares. Nice four red days in a row here. Uh, broke 30 today. I'm waiting to add another 100,000 shares. Uh, I've got like 400 something thousand right now, man. I got a lot of shares. I love this stock. I'll keep adding this thing. I am very confident that it's gonna break 60 cents. This is a long-term investment and uh, I love it. So I, I'm just gonna I'm keep pounding the table with this one. That's pretty much it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, you know the drill. Let's go better. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que 